Good morning, everyone. It is a Monday morning here in Iowa, and today I'm going to uh, just video a little project that I'm working on today, and um, hopefully it'll be something fun that um, you might want to try. Uh, it's a simple, cute little project. Uh, I am going to embroider a little bat tissue gnome on a piece of wool that will wrap around a I roll of bat tissue and this is what it'll look like um, I've got two designs this is one I did yesterday which turned out really cute you can see it's on a bath roll I haven't decided yet if I'm going to use um, cam snaps or velcro or what kind of deal I'm going to use for the closure on the back just yet but uh, I figure I'll tackle that here in a little while because I know I want to do more than one of these. So whatever I do uh, to, for a closure, um, I will use it on the same, uh, do the same on both rolls of tissue. So um, my design is from Tattered Stitches. Um, I bought two and uh, this is the one I'm gonna be doing today. This is the one I did yesterday. And these come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. So uh, I'm using the small because uh, 2.33 by 3.9 inches is just about the limit because my fabric, my wool fabric that I have measured and cut for the bat tissue wrap is four inches wide so I can't go I can't go much wider than four inches and it is let's see if you want to do this you'll need a piece of fabric 16 and a half by 14 to do this and this is wool you can use felt um, I think you can use probably anything something cute um, and uh, this is my, my design's going to be centered and this is enough for a little bit of an overlap on the ends when we're finished. So I'm going to be using my medium hoop and sticky back tear away interfacing. So I'm going to hoop that up now. I've already um, dropped my design down onto my USB stick and I'll put that in my machine when I get over there. And um, so now all I have to do is hoop up my stabilizer. Let me get my cutter out. And we'll hoop up my stabilizer and we'll be all set to go to the machine. So I have my inner hoop and outer hoop pretty loose because this stabilizer is kind of tough. So I'm just going to go shiny side up, paper side up, or shiny side up. The other side's dull, and you can feel it's tear away inner uh, stabilizer, not interfacing. Almost said interfacing. Tear away stabilizer. So then I'm going to just um, whack this off. Right up there that done and I've already I, I kind of like to put a little bit of a shape to this before I put my inner hoop in it's a little bit easier to get it hooped up this way so then we'll stick the hoop in here and then we'll burp the hoop a little bit because you always want to do that protects the bed of your machine and uh, it it's also makes the work of moving the project whoops moving the project a little easier for your module on so okay now let's tighten this up so put this on here and tighten it up a little bit and then we'll make sure everything looks good and you don't want to tighten it too tight for one thing, you don't want to strip the threads on your little screw. And for another thing, you can't really hoop anything. 
super duper tight because um, nothing will work right. Just nothing. So there's kind of a, I've said this lots of times in my videos, there's kind of a sweet spot. Okay, I'm liking this, so I'm gonna tighten it the rest of the way down. And, all right, good. And let's see, we're gonna need a stylus so we can take the paper off because we need the sticky. So let's do this. I'm just going to take my stylus. You can use a pen. A stylus has always been my preferred tool. And then I'll go down through the middle here with kind of a little curvy sort of a line. And pick it up. And I always if I can get it started here. I always tear up. It seems like it works better if you tear up. So there's half off. And let's do this one, this side. And got that. And tear, whoops, tear up. And let's see if we can get this off. It looks kind of crappy. I like it to look neat, even if it's, there we go. Okay, so now I've got our sticky back stabilizer all set. Let me put my stylus away. And now we need a center mark for our piece of fabric. So I know this is four inches wide, so I need to come up two inches. So there's two inches, and let me see here. This is just a friction pin. So we'll put that, put a mark down the middle this way. There we go. And then we need a center spot going the other direction. So. Do that. And I think I'll be able to see these without needing to put a mark down that way. So now my fabric's the same on both sides pretty much. So it wouldn't matter what direction I folded this. So let's see here. Let's see, here's my center marks here and my center marks here, and that's kind of where I want to land. So let me see here if I can do this just like this. I've just folded it over. I'm going to come in here to my center marks, and I'm using, I'm just eyeballing, making sure that my center mark going up and down is going to match. So let's see where we're at. So I'm just sort of pressing this down gently. You don't, on sticky back stabilizer, you don't really want to mash it down on there. Okay, let's have a look. Wow. Looks pretty good. So let's check this side. Perfect. Check this side. Um, well, it's about a sixteenth of an inch off. But I think I can live with that. I don't want to re-stick it. So. Okay. So we're all hooped up. We're ready to go to the machine and uh, go ahead and stitch out this little bath tissue gnome. So we are at the machine. I have gone ahead and put in my USB stick and pulled up all the designs on my USB stick. So we will scroll through here until I find my little bath tissue gnome that I want to do. 
Um, and there he is. Um, I'm not going to, it thinks that I'm using the wrong foot, even though I do have my 26 foot on and my singles, single hole stitch plate. It thinks I'm using the wrong foot because I just uh, finished sewing a garment type project and I haven't changed it yet. So let's tell the machine, I, yes, I do have my 26 foot. Yes, I have my, it likes the zero millimeter stitch plate. So we're ready to go with that. And since I've been sewing, you can see over this way, my arm is way, way parked, my embroidery arm over to the left. So when I send this to the machine to actually stitch out, I'll touch this needle icon. Um, and my arm is going to come over here in the position and now it's going to ask for the hoop. Your machine will always ask you lots and lots of questions. So it's important to just know what to tell it. Upside down here. There we go, whoops, sorry. Now, get this baby on here. Get my fabric all situated here where I want it nice and pretty and what do we need oh it wants to calibrate and put it into position typically I use a basting box but this is such a small project and since I'm using the sticky back tear away um, I don't think I need a basting box plus this design I see a I see a little hair on my fabric there we go. Um, this design is kind of a loose sort of um, stitched design. So you'll see a little bit of the fabric behind the stitching. It's loose, not a heavy, dense one. So um, I don't think I need a basting box. So let's see, let's put on, let's put on some embroidery thread and I've got to change my bobbin because I have regular sewing thread in my bobbin. I've been making some cute masks. So I'm going to use 60 weight. Let's see if I can, I have to have a good look at this. Yep, 60 weight. I'm using 60 weight thread in my bobbin. So there's that. Let's get that in. I can kind of feel my way around under there. And on our design, it says the first color I need is cream and white, and it's gonna be the bath tissue. So, let me see here. Let's use this one. And I'm gonna put it on my upright spool holder since it is a straight wound, a straight wound uh, spool of thread. If it was cross wound, I'd do it a little different. There we go. And you always wanna keep your fingers back. We talk about that all the time. So I'm gonna pull up my bobbin thread and my buzz because it's the first stitch for today. So there's my bobbin thread. We are babysitting a couple of pugs for some friends of ours who had a death in their family and have an awful lot of people coming and going from their house. So they brought their pugs over here to stay with us, which we take care of them for, for that family when they go on vacation too. But anyway, one of them is very attached to my husband and he sees him outside walking past the window. He's out doing something in the yard and he wants him to come in. <laughs> so you'll hear him barking, I guess. So, okay, here we go with our beginning stitches for the back tissue. 
to stop my machine and clip these threads. You always want to stop your machine. Don't try to clip threads when things are moving. Looks like this step is going to take about five minutes. So we'll watch this stitch just a little bit and then we will, I'll stop the video because you won't want to sit and watch this all day long. And then when we get to the next color, we'll take a look at that. think that this light colored thread wouldn't show up very well on the light colored fabric but um, as oops we broke a thread as the design goes along there's some outline stitching that makes it turn into the bath tissue and look really good I'm using a small needle probably this is mm, I don't know this might be a 60 size 60 and um, so now I'm going to show you how to back up um, it's it has sensed that the thread broke and we're going to X out of this and you'll see there's a big screen here that's kind of a close-up view of all your of your stitching that's going on and here is zero we are at stitch zero and over here to the left, you can't see them in the video. Let me turn my camera just a little bit. But here are my, my um, knobs that I can change this stitch with. So since my thread broke, I'm going to use my top knob and I'm going to go back about eight stitches. One, well, I went nine, that's okay. So, here we go, we'll start again, and it's gonna lock it off, and take off, and finish stitching. And now I have to cut my thread again. So I'm gonna raise my foot so I can see where I'm at, because I don't wanna cut the wrong thread. There we go. All right, off we go. Hopefully we won't have too much thread breakage. Well now, isn't that wonderful? Let's see, we may end up, let me see if I can get this out of here. We may end up loosening our tension just a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna wanna bring up my presser foot so that I've got no tension on my, you always wanna thread your machine with your foot up. Okay, there we go. You know, some threads are two ply, some threads are three ply. Okay, let's back up again like we did before. About five, seven, and let's do something with our tension here. Let's go back to 2.5 on our tension, and we'll try that. And uh, so anyway, the ply, clip my thread. The ply on thread. The way the way thread is, let's see here, let's get going. The way thread is wound, it is spun and it's spun in a single thread. And then when it is made into sewing thread, if it's two ply, then it's two of those single threads and they're spun in one direction. And then when they are spun into a ply, they're spun in the opposite direction. I hope that makes sense. So when it goes through the eye of your needle, it actually goes through the eye of the needle six or seven times before it actually becomes a stitch in your fabric. And three ply thread is even, you know, it's even more stress on the thread doing that. And so, um, also, the kind of thread you use, like cotton, polyester, those are a natural and a man-made fiber, uh, silk, uh, those, when the thread is spun, 
there is a, something called a staple, and that's the length of fiber that it takes to get it caught and twisted. So some threads have a short staple, some threads have a long staple. And uh, you'll come to like and prefer certain threads. It isn't that your Bernina machine won't use certain threads. There are people that come on and say, well, my Bernina doesn't like I support or Orafil, or my Bernina doesn't like this or that. Your Bernina will sew with any kind of thread you ask it to. You just have to do a couple of little adjustments because all thread is a little bit different. Two ply, three ply, long staple, short staple. So there's a little lesson for you on threads for today. <laughs> you know thread weights the higher the number the finer the thread the needles the higher the number the heavier the needle so it's just a little bit backwards but um, when you can wrap your mind around it it, it all kind of comes together so it looks like we're stitching along good now everything looks beautiful so um and it also looks like I just have one minute left on this, so we'll wait and then we'll switch threads. And I'm going to show you a little um, trick on switching threads. Okay, now it's ready for the next thread color. So up here at the top of my machine, I'm going to clip the thread up here. And uh, my little tip for you, which everybody already knows this, but I'll say it anyway. Um, definitely pull your thread out the bottom when you're changing threads. Don't ever reach up and pull it out the top. It's awfully hard on your tension discs. And if you're using a very linty thread, some threads are terribly linty, then you are just going to mess up your tension discs. So now then, let me see. What color do we want next? I gotta look on my sheet. Oh, it wants pleasant peach next. And I think that the, um, I'm gonna thread my machine up here. If I bump you, I'm sorry. Um, I think that this design uses Madeira threads, and I might own some, but I don't ever look at the brand of thread. Uh, I look at the colors, and I kind of go by my own colors. The, the bulk of my thread for embroidery is thread art thread um, and I find it just beautiful perfect it doesn't fade wash is good I don't have any trouble with it at all and it's reasonably priced it's good thread don't ever try to use old thread that that is such a you know you'll just always be taking ten steps back and one step forward with old thread just use new nice new thread and a good brand. Don't use cheap thread. Even if it's new, you'll still be in trouble. So, uh, okay. So on my screen, it looks like it's gonna stitch a little bit around his face. Let's see what it says. Um, some little flowers. The little flowers on the front of his little shirt and the flower on the top of his hat. So here we go. I'm gonna bring my bobbin thread up again. hard for you to see it, I know. Oh, well, that's okay. I wish I would have gotten my top thread down through the hole on the presser foot, but that's okay. We'll, we've got to stop and clip them anyway. No big deal. I hope this design fits on here. This is only four inches, and I was thinking that it said 
three point something something. Okay, here we go. There we go. And I'm saving all my thread clippings. Save all your thread clippings and then a little bit later this year, we'll do something fun with all your thread clippings. So this color just takes a minute. And I'm gonna clip at the top again, pull my thread out the bottom, save my thread, put away my spool, and look and see what color it wants next. Alrighty, let me see here. Corn silk. It wants corn silk next, which is a pretty yellow. There we go. You know, playing with color is kind of a fun thing. You don't have to go by what the pattern says. I have hardly ever done that. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I dropped my scissors. I gotta pick those up. There we go. All right, here we go. And this is the flower center. So this will just be a tiny, tiny little bit of stitching. I'll just hold my threads to the side because it's hardly gonna take any time for this to do what it's gonna do. thread at the top, pull out the needle, save my threads, put my spool away, well not put it clear away but wind it, the loose thread back up, and what color do we need next? Mantis, ooh I'm gonna have to go hunt that up, let's see, Mantis, that's kind of a really light green. Okay. Hold on. I gotta go get a spool of thread. It always amazes me the colors, the names for the colors that the designers come up with. Well, this one's as close as I can get. This is a sulky thread. So you see, I can mix. <laughs> I mix everything up on stuff I do. Mix thread companies up and I, just, oh, I can mix polyester and rayon. It doesn't bother me at all probably wouldn't matter. Oh, I'll pull up my bobbin thread. You can't hardly see my bobbin thread, but it's there. Okay, here we go. And this one's gonna take a minute. And I am gonna stop it and clip my threads because I don't want these to get in the way. Why I am at the very, very top <laughs> and the very, very bottom of my piece of fabric. Whew. So the next time I do this, I am going to reduce this design by about 5%. It'll fit in, in the 
four inch space. But this is wool, so it's not going to ravel or go anywhere. It'll be just fine. I did, on my first one, try a little sample. I'll show you when I get back over to my uh, work table. Um, I tried putting a little edge along, but I didn't like it, so I just left it plain. But I wanted to see, so I took a scrap and checked it out. All right, putting my spool away. Next color, fuchsia. Uh, what are we going to call fuchsia? Hmm, well, I'm going to turn you off. You don't want to wait on me. I'll be right back. So we're coming along. Stitching the little girl's braids now. And the next thing will be her little dress. Let me see. There we go. I didn't figure you'd want to watch me selecting thread and changing and rethreading and all that fun stuff. So I moved ahead just a little bit and did several colors while you were away. I am not using my yellow bobbin case today. Um, the reason for that is because I only have one layer of stabilizer and because this is a light weave or light um, embroidery and my wool is not a very heavy fabric and the yellow bobbin case is high tension and um, you kind of learn that you want to evaluate each project as you go. So your yellow bobbin case isn't going to be used for every, whoops, too close, every single embroidery project or every single free motion quilting project, which that's what the yellow bobbin case is for, is embroidery and free motion quilting and using with your BSR you can. have to use your critical thinking skills and, and uh, think about things and say, gosh, is this going to be too much tension for this fine fabric or um, small design or whatever. Most of the times the yellow bobbin case is fine, um, but on this one I knew that my black bobbin case was going to be sufficient and I didn't want to push things too far. If you remember, you saw earlier in my video that I had to adjust my top tension a little bit anyway and reduce it a little. So I'm glad I didn't start out with the yellow bobbin case on this particular project because I would have had headaches from the get-go. Okay, now we need Okay, switch threads real quick, and we're heading off, I believe, for the flowers across the bottom of the design. There we go. thread. Whoops. Did I make it? I don't think I did. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, well, that's all right. There we go. Now, where'd it go? Oh, here we go. I can't even see it. <laughs> okay. Off and around right here.
gloves. This is just going to take a minute to stitch out. And I only have a few more colors to do until it will start to do the outlines, and that's the last step of this design. darker blue. I'll thread that up real quick. I have my thread sitting on the table in front of my machine and I'm coming up and over through the um, staple threader. I don't know what else to call it. Looks like a staple on the top of your machine. And then over to my tension discs. I do that with my embroidery threads that are on cro on uh, yeah cross round wound spools. Okay, we'll do our two feet. see if I can get you back where you can see things. There we go. I don't know if you can see very good. Let me put you down a little more. You can watch some of the stitching. There we go. Okay. Here we go. Clip at the top. Take care of my thread. Next one at once is tomato red. So I guess we we'll use this one. I think that's the little hearts on the flowers on the bottom. This design is from Tattered Stitch and they have some really cute, lovely designs. And uh, she is really good about digitizing for you if you want something special. All right, let's see here. Okay. Whoops, well, that went fast and it was pulling too hard, I guess. There we go. Come on, don't give me so much trouble. There we go. Pulled too hard on my thread. There we go. color coming along. All these thread changes, they seem like kind of a pain, but I don't mind. And this isn't a very big design. If it was a bigger design, the thread changes wouldn't seem like such a hassle, but this whole thing only takes a few minutes. 
it's just there's a lot of thread changes in it. And, um, where's my bobbin thread? Let's try this again. Some, some designs do have a lot of thread changes, and they even change back and forth, and you wonder why on earth the digitizer didn't do all the same color in one shot. Um, but the fact is, there's a good reason why digitizers do the things they do, and there might be something underneath, or, or uh, to the side, or over top of another color so that you have to go back and repeat a color once in a while. All right, so that one didn't take very long either. And we're going right along here. Let's put this away. And what do we want here? We want rustic pink. Does this look like a rustic pink? No, not to me. Let's see. That's peach. Hmm. Well, let me think about this color a second. Okay, I am to the very last step, which is the outline stitching of the whole design. And it's, it asked me to use black. It says emerald black. But on my other one, I used this sort of cantaloupe color because I wanted the whole design to be a little bit softer in color and not quite, I don't want black, um, you know, because it would just be too much of a contrast in my opinion. So I'm using this same cantaloupe cover color, sorry, on this one to do the outline stitches so that um, they match a little bit. So this is my last step and we will be done. Down where you can see her. There she is. 
sound asleep. She's a big help. She's just sleeping away. So I'm very gently moving this back off the sticky to where I see stitches coming. And I am gonna try and very carefully take this out right on the stitching. Whoop, sorry. See how it's coming out? Just right on the stitching. So, there we are. So now I'm gonna run over here and press it real quick so that I get rid of my uh, marking lines. Clean it up here just a minute. I'll get it up here where you can see it better. Okay. All right, be right back. And there we go. Move it just a little bit. So, there we are, all done. And uh, I'll put that on another roll of bath tissue. I see a thread I need to trim. Right here. So now, I think I'll probably do cam snaps on these for closures. I think Velcro would, you know, pulling it apart over and over again might stretch this wool. But anyway, there he is. So now I have two. And I can put those on the back of on the shelf on, in my um, bathroom and enjoy those this summer. So I hope you had fun watching. Give it a try. If you have any questions, just shout. Have a good day selling. Bye.